welcome to part two of our story about canister, also known as spin-on oil filters. If you haven't watched part one, this will make a lot more sense to you if you watch it first. Bill and I actually cut seven different brands of oil filters open to see if we could actually see the differences between brands and prices of filters. In part one, we examined the filter media and talked about oil filter bypass valves. I've got Bill here again as we dig deeper inside these filters. So Bill, take it away. Well, thanks, Alex. I'm always glad to talk about filters and have another chance. And we talked about filter media, and one thing I didn't mention when we talked about filter media in the last video was as a filter gets taller, the pleats have a tendency sometimes to close together because there's a lot of oil pressure and force coming in there. So it's not uncommon for good filter manufacturers to put a band around the filter to stabilize the pleats. Hmm. Matter of fact, you can see one of our competitors actually put a string around their filter. Yep. Same thing, to keep those pleats stable from moving. Now, at the same time, to be fair to these other manufacturers, these are pretty short filters, and those pleats are pretty stable. So I wouldn't condemn anybody, you know, for not putting the band on here. But as you get it's into taller, taller filters, it's a big thing that you need to look for when you separate, the, you know, the really good filters from the other filters. Got it. Okay? Okay. And you and I were talking on break also about these filters, and we cut them apart. And some of them have coil springs on top, as you can see here. And others have metal, sheet metal on top of them. And in both cases, they serve the same purpose. When you first start the engine up, let me put this back together and we can talk about it. When you first start the engine up and start pumping dirty oil into the filter, the oil comes in through these holes around here. All these filters work the same way. Okay. So the oil comes in those holes, comes up inside this canister, and then it is trying to force its way through this paper to get filtered. And when you first start an engine, especially in cold weather like we have here in Michigan, that oil is pretty thick. And it'll put a lot of force on the end plate on the filter and the media as it's trying to get through there. So much that it'll actually push this filter forward a bit in the canister. And that spring is actually there to push the filter back. Because if we let the filter get out of place and stay there, then we have drain back problems. And we also have oils getting by the filter and never getting clean. So it's important that we put a spring there. Now, hardened coil springs are a little bit pricey, so you see some filter manufacturers, in order to cut a few pennies or, or a few dimes here and yeah. there, they take a piece of stamped sheet metal and they make their <laughs> spring out of that and sheet metal. And hope it springs back. Exactly, hope it springs back. Well, if it gets forced there really hard, it may stay deformed forever. Yeah. And then you have a marginal filter from the rest of the time out. So always, coil springs are better than sheet metal plates. Got it. Okay. Now, I take the coil spring off of here and we have on the filter what we call the end plates. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have metal end plates on a lot of these filters. And then we get over here to this one. And instead of metal end plates, what do we have? Cardboard. Yeah, we got cardboard. You can take your fingers here and bend this yeah. cardboard. Already okay? ruined. Yeah, it's already <laughs> bent up a little bit. So it's, uh, I think, a no brainer. Would you rather have cardboard end plates or would you rather have nice steel end plates? Steel. Yeah. Now, Every day by the way, the end plates serve a function. It's not just a matter of they look more robust. Yeah. We actually glue the filter media top and bottom to the end plates. And if we miss anywhere with the glue, we have oil and it gets bypassed and doesn't go through the media. And it's just dirty oil going right back in the engine. So metal allows us to do a really nice glue joint. And we can look in all these filters, and you can actually see the glue in these filters. And what we're looking for when we look at a quality filter is we're looking for a nice uniform glue joint. We don't want glue running out the side of the filter and all over the metal and stuff, but we don't, don't want to be short on glue. You know, we need to be able to see the glue 360 degrees around the filter. Okay. So that's the story on the end plates. Any questions so far? You know, I talk a lot, so <laughs> feel free to speak right up here. Um, I'm not sh Did we already go over this? No, we didn't. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I get old and I forget this stuff. You know, we start with pleated paper, and it's flat. And then they have to coil it, you know, round it up into a coil to make this filter. And when they do that, what they actually do, whoops, is they glue the two ends together. And that's what forms that round filter element is the glue. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to glue it, but it's even better to glue it and then put a metal crimp on top of it 
because if I miss a little spot with the glue, again, I have a void and dirty oil goes right through there and right back into the engine and never gets filtered. So again, if you're looking at a really good filter and an okay filter, a plus is to have that metal crimp on top of the joint. Got it. So that was a good catch. Now, Bill, I've got a question for you. There's a little bit now, of confusion. Wait a now, where did you get that? Oh, filter? I just, I just had it sitting over oh, here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I this is a good one. To fool me here. Okay. This is a good one to ask you about because right. I think there's some confusion about how tight you're supposed to tighten a filter when you put it, install it in the motor. So I would agree. There's, I mean, do you tighten it a lot? Do you tighten it a little bit? And there's some markings on this filter. So why don't you see if we yeah. can? Yeah. Well, what we're doing when we tighten a filter up is we're putting some load on this rubber seal here. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of a round one. Uh, many of them are flat. But oh, what yeah. we're trying to do, we always, of course, put oil on there. And there's a little picture on here of a guy or a gal with a squirt can squirting oil on there, saying, put some oil on there. And that oil makes this slippery, makes it turn easier. And then we want to tighten that filter up a third of a turn. And there actually is a little picture on here where somebody turned in their hand that says 0.3. So a third of a turn. Okay. And that just gets everything seated. And then typically it's about another third of a turn, you know, to compress the rubber. And if you've got a relatively good grip, and I know you do, you can tighten it t plenty tight enough with just your hand, assuming hmm. you can get your hand on it. Right. And where people make mistakes is they get these filter wrenches and they just, you know, they triple the leverage they have and they just tighten the living crap out of yeah. these filters. And then you can never get it off. No, I've had them so bad that I've had to drive a chisel in here and a hammer and spin them off with a chisel. I mean, they're just horrible. No reason for it whatsoever. Matter of fact, you're more likely to cause this to deform so bad that we have oil leaking out. So don't so you're, over tighten. You're better off a little under tightened? then over tightened. Yeah, like I say, one third of a turn to snug it down, another third of a turn or so to tighten it up. Okay. And don't get too crazy. Now what about putting oil inside the filter before you install it? I uh, don't no need to do that. Okay. Your, your car typically will clatter and not have any oil pressure for about 10 seconds when you first start it up if you do your own oil change, but it really doesn't hurt anything. So, and it's a mess, you know, you put it in there and then if you tilt a little bit, it's well, running out Well, if you install it way. up, then yeah, it doesn't spill. Yeah, if it went up that way, but, you know, if it goes like that, right. then, you then, know, then it's you're, like, good that's luck. That's true. So, Depends on I, I the don't think it's anything to get too excited about. Okay. Okay. Now, what I always did, and I've changed my own oil, even now I'm an old man, I still change my own oil. And I always start the engine up once I'm done and I let it run until the oil pressure light goes out. And then I always look under it to make sure that I don't have oil running out. I actually goofed up once years ago, and what had happened is this rubber, see you can pull it out of there? Yeah. Well, I didn't notice it, but the rubber from the old filter, the dirty one, stayed stuck on the engine. And then when I put the new filter on with its own rubber there, I had double the rubber. Uh -oh. Well, it didn't seal worth a hoot. Yeah, I started up, man, I got oil running out of there, you know, <laughs> oil all over my barn floor. It was a big mess. Yeah. So now I'm careful when I take the old filter out to make sure the rubber's still there. But uh, it never hurts to look under there and make sure you don't have oil running out when sense. you get this job done. So good. that was a good question. Now, do you see anything on here I've missed? You know, sometimes I get carried away here. I hope you didn't notice that I missed anything. Well, I think we covered everything except what's this little rubber thing on the top. Oh, here. I'm glad you asked. And you're right, we have. I think we've covered everything else but this little rubber thing here. I believe so, yeah. Okay, so let's put this filter kind of back together and talk about it here. And as you recall, dirty oil comes in these holes, yep. okay? And of course it goes into the filter and it comes out, clean oil comes out here. And when I shut the engine off, I'd like the oil that I was just filtering that's in here to stay in here. If it all runs back out, then the next time I start the car, it's going to clatter as I have to pump oil back through the system. So if the filter would happen to be positioned like this, and some cars are, there would be a tendency for all that oil to run out of this filter back down into the engine. Then I'd have to pump oil back in when I started it. So we have in there this little black thing mm -hmm. called an anti-drain back valve. And it sits just like so, and it seals the bottom of that filter and prevents that oil from running out when you shut the car off. Yeah, it works really good in most cases. Sometimes it'll, it'll work for a month or two. You know, a lot of times I don't drive that Jeep of mine for a month and that oil will still be in the filter when I start it out. 
Now I would point out to you, you notice the one on the Molly filter is black. Yep. And you notice some of these others are orange and different colors. Uh, there's another orange one there. Uh, there's yep. different qualities of rubber here. Standard ordinary uh, nitrile rubber uh, is about a 250 degree temp rubber. And if it gets hotter in 250, it starts to get brittle and <laughs> hard. And of course, these need to be pliable in order to seal good, right. especially as this filter moves around in here a little bit. So uh, we prefer to use a better material, a synthetic rubber that's good to up over 400 degrees temp before it gets brittle. And uh, I know you've got uh, oil temp gauge in your race car. And you know, in high, you were racing in Vegas here recently, and yeah. it's 90 degrees, the engine's hot. Right. It's not uncommon to see oil temps up to 275, maybe even up to 300 degrees. So even that's, that kind of conditions will cause this drain back valve to get stiff after time. Yes. And then we have some car manufacturers, just by the way the engine goes, this filter will often be really close to the exhaust system. And it'll get extra heat from the exhaust that right. it wouldn't get from the oil. Any more questions for me? I don't believe so. Well, appreciate you coming. I know you run Molly filters in your race car and your personal car as well. Absolutely. The next time you're in town, what we're going to talk about is the more modern filters, which essentially got rid of the canister. And now we're talking about a filter element and hmm. we're talking about eco filters. So the next time you're in town, we'll have a little talk about eco filters and elements and all that stuff. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah.